Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory and in this video, a men's match where one team picks on the weakest link on the other team. It proves to be a winning strategy. Find out exactly how they did it, do it, and you'll win more games. Before I go on, a big shout out to the YouTube channel, We Play You Rate. They have posted a number of matches now, so check it out sometime. Let's go. So let's start with the players. First, you have the guy right here on the left in the near court in the hat. His name is Anders. The guy to his right with the beard, his name is Chad. Their opponents are right here, the tall guy. His name is Hal. This guy's name is Joey. So right off the bat, the very first thing you should notice is that Hal is perhaps one of the tallest pickleball players I have ever seen a video of. I mean, I'm thinking he is at least 6'6", if not 6'7". So what does that mean going into this game? It means that if he can get to the non-volley zone, to the kitchen area, he's going to be able to extend his hand and take a lot of balls out of the air. So these two guys right here, Anders and Chad, are going to have to do a really good job of hitting third shot drops and resets. Another thing, if one of these guys, either Anders or Chad, are dinking and they decide to pop one up chest high or a little bit higher, I can promise you, Hal is just going to put it away and it will not be a question of whether or not Hal and Joey will get that point. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, that was over. Very good job by Anders and Chad. Uh, if you could see what happened, Hal just hit that ball up a little bit too high. Here we go. There's a shot, and there it is right there. When the opponent hits a ball like this, someone watching my videos called it a lollipop. So I'm going to call this a lollipop, and Anders is just going to put it away right down the middle of the court. And there it is. And he just said he loved that. And there's just an unforced error. I don't know why that happens, but I'm sure you do it as well. You have to be mentally into the game. Maybe he's just not warmed up yet, but there's really not too much of an excuse for doing that. Look at the serve. The serve is half court. This is not a good serve. He gets it all the way back, trying to hit a third shot drop, cannot do it. And look where um, Joey is. He's way back on the line here. Again, he was not able to put that ball into the kitchen, not allowing Joey to advance to the non-volley zone. He is in a horrible position right here, and nothing good can happen when Joey is at this point. And he hits it right into the net. It all started with Hal's very weak serve. Let's see if Joey can do better. It's a little bit better, but look how good that return is. It's very deep. It gives Anders enough time to get to the nine volley zone. And look at this. Uh, Joey is in the exact same position he was in a while ago when he hit the ball to the net. Let's see if he can do better this time. No, he tried. Anders takes it out of the air. Joey is not able to advance. He takes it out of the air again. He's finally there. Good job with that. And now here goes the dinking. and Joey makes an unforced error. Nice third shot into the kitchen. Oh, again, he hit it to Hal. That is a mistake. He should not be hitting that ball to Hal. He was able to defend it. Very nice job by Hal. Nice deep serve. Joey trying to get up to the non-volley zone and he makes it. Here goes the dinking. Keep dinking to Joey. Do not hit it to Hal. Good job by Anders. Oh, nice job. And this ball is going to be put away right here. At least it should be. Yeah, just could not uh, defend that shot. Just hit it up a little bit too high. And Hal and Joey did a good job of putting that ball away. Great return. There it is. And look where Joey and Hal are. They're still stuck 
at the service line. They are not able to hit a third shot drop or a reset in order to advance to the kitchen area. Can they do it? That's not good. That's not good. And he just makes the error right into the net. They really had no shot at that point because they were just not able to get to the nine volley zone and uh, Anders and Chad just kept them back. Another unforced error by Joey. That's not a good return. A little high. Now, can he drop it in? Not yet because Hal is so tall. Great job. Maybe the seventh shot he got into the non-volley zone. Terrific by Anders. Just keep working at it, keep working at it, and eventually made it to the non-volley zone and got the point. That's too high. Yep, goodbye. Very poor job on Joey's part. He did not run up to the non-volley zone quick enough, got caught about mid-court, and just popped it up. Yeah, put away. Just not a good return by Hal. You just can't do that against players of Anders and Chaz's ability. So the name of this channel is We Play You Rate. I think I already have a general idea of where these players are. Did you see that shot right there? Into the kitchen, another reset into the kitchen. It takes a lot of skill to, that ball's gone. No, he defended it. Wow, what a get by Joey. Let's go back and watch that. You know, I was commenting about how good Anders and Chad was playing, and Joey kind of sneaked up and uh, took that ball right out of the air and was able to defend it. So a really nice get by Joey. There it is. You thought that ball would have been put away. And then uh, Anders makes the unforced error. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to rate Anders and Chad. I can tell you right now that Anders and Chad are at at least the 4.0 level. They are very, very good at hitting a third shot drop into the kitchen from way back of the service line. They can also reset the ball. They have really nice deep drives and they have very nice deep returns. So I'm thinking right now, Anders and Chad, at least 4.0. I'm going to check out and let you know what I think about Hal and Joey a little later on because I have not really concentrated on them that much. See that? Oh, man. Just an unforced error. Hal kicks the ball. You can tell he's frustrated. He should have gotten that. As tall as he is, he should have gotten that. And they call that serve out by uh, Chad. It was close. But according to Joey, it was out. The score is five to nothing at this point. Okay, great shot by Anders. Hit it to Joey's backhand and he could just not get it. So as you can see, Joey has made quite a few unforced errors. And uh, let's go ahead and watch this for another minute or so. Okay, no chance. No chance for Joey right here. Well, he was able to make it up, so I'll take that back. Nice job. Keep hitting it to Joey. Do not hit it to Hal. Good job getting it to Joey. an oh yeah yeah shot at least that's what uh chad is calling it he just made a huge mistake again how is one of the tallest pickleball players i have ever seen chad just made a fatal mistake of putting that ball right into his slam zone and that's exactly what hal did and joe i mean uh chad is just really kind of laughing about it to be honest with you i thought that was pretty hilarious so uh let's continue here that was pretty funny. Goodbye. Oh, he was able to reset it. I thought he was going to take that out of the air. Still hitting it to Joey, and I promise you, Chad is not going to hit this ball to Hal. There's no way that's going to happen. All right, so I think he called that in. It was questionable. He just uh, let the ball fly. He thought it was out of the court, and it was not. So right now the score is 5-2. to two. 
Um, Hal and Joey have scored two points. The one that was hit right up to Hal, and Hal just slammed it. And that point right there where um, Anders just backed out of the way to let the ball go out, but it did not go out. So I talked about Anders and Chad being really, really good players. Not only are they good players, they are smart players because what they are doing is they are keeping the ball away from Hal. How effective are they uh, doing that? Well, I can tell you this. They have targeted Joey 55 times up to this point. They have only hit 20 shots in Hal's direction. I'm not saying Joey is a bad player. He obviously has some skills, but it looks to me as though Anders and Chad have chosen to go after Joey because they believe he is the weaker player of the two. He may not be weaker than Hal, but Hal is just so tall. Anders and Chad have chosen not to hit it to him if possible. Let's see if that continues for the rest of the match. Hitting it to Joey again. And I think they called that out. So an unforced error by Chad. All right, all four players at the net again. Let's see if Chad chooses to hit it to Hal. And he does not. Hal is getting frustrated because hardly any shots are going his way. Great defense right there. Oh, he got the tape. Great defense again and again. I don't think Hal was expecting that. I think they Hal was expecting them to hit it to Joey. All of a sudden, sneak attack on Hal, and Hal cannot get it back over the net. Nice serve. Nice third shot drive. Oh, there it is. That was the shake and bake. If you don't know what a shake and bake is, let's go back and take a look at it. So here's the serve. Here's the third shot, a very hard third shot drive. Joey got the chicken wing going, popped the ball up. So the third shot drive was the shake. The fifth shot, here comes the bake. They could not have done that any better. That is a perfect example of how to win a point. Goodbye. Oh, he missed the lob. How does a guy that's 6'7 miss a lob? That should not have happened. That might happen once every one in 100 tries on a guy that tall. Look at that shot right there. Nice. Look at that drop into the kitchen. Another one. And he makes an unforced error. But Chad is an excellent player. Now, again, I rated Chad and Anders as 4.0. So let me go ahead and rate Hal and Joey. I think their talent level is very similar. However, unlike Anders and Chad, they do not serve deep. They do not return deep. They are not consistent at hitting third shot drops or resetting the ball. Therefore, they're somewhere between 3.0 and 3.5. I've got to give them a 3.25 uh, because they just cannot hit consistent third shot drops into the kitchen or reset the ball. I really think that Hal and Joey's talent level are about the same. The reason that Anders and Chad are targeting Joey is because Hal is just so tall. Another thing I want you to look at is their demeanor on the court, their body language. It looks like Anders and Chad are having a really fun time. They're laughing, they're talking to each other, they're bouncing around. On the other hand, Hal and Joey don't look like they're having much fun. Their shoulders are shrunken. They're not talking a lot. Uh, Hal is especially a little preterred simply because he is not getting too many opportunities. And when he does, he has made some unforced errors. So I just wanted to point that out. And there you have it. Uh, finally, Hal got a shot and what happened right into the net.
nice deep return. Oh, a chicken wing shot that he got back. That usually doesn't happen. Okay, see there? He was dinking to Hal. All of a sudden, he changed it up. Oh, why'd you hit it to Hal? Oh, that's why he got another opportunity and right into the net. That's why Hal is not a 4.0 player. Well, not able to get it into the kitchen, but look at this defense. That's about five at another unforced era. I mean, Hal and Joey had them back. They were having to defend, and they just could not put the ball away. And he hit it out. He think he was hoping that Hal would hit it. But Hal just turned his shoulder and the ball went out. Nine to five. Nine, five two. Look, oh, he almost made it. Couldn't quite get there. There you have it. They continue to hit the ball to Joey. Joey again. Joey again. Hal's try, trying to get in on the action, but they're not hitting it to Hal. There's no way. And Joey loses the point. Hal has got to be just steaming. He wants in on the action, and Anders and Chad are just smart enough not to hit it to him. And when they do, look what Hal does. And you can see how frustrated he is. He's ready to get off the court. I mean, it's 9-5. to five. They have absolutely no chance of winning this game. Okay. Excellent play by Anders. 4.0 level play. Nice defense. And putting the ball away when he had the opportunity. Uh, Third shot drive, fifth shot drive. Nice defense by Joey. And he called that ball out. Look at that drop. Look at that third shot drop from behind the baseline, backhanded. That is just excellent by Chad, a 4.0 player. This will give them an opportunity to get to the nine volley zone. Right there. Great defense right down the middle of the court. Absolutely fantastic. Once again, I'm thinking that Anders and Chad are at least six feet tall. Joey, he's not quite that tall. But when you look at Hal, Hal just kind of towers over them. I would think he's at least 6'7". So there you have the game. Anders and Chad win 11-5. to five. When it was all said and done... Joey was targeted 90 times. Hal only received 36 opportunities. So there you have it, a common pickleball strategy in which one team picked on the weakest player on the other team, and it worked to perfection in this game. That's all I have for you today. I hope you learned something from watching this video. If you did, I hope you take the time to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. Thanks again for watching and see you on the courts.